We're going, we're as Watson right now. We're gonna go outside for Sherlock because he's trying not to like interfere with the detectives assigned to this case because I guess like they'll, he'll make them look bad because he's like so renowned. This is Sherlock, by the way. <laughs> what? You still haven't left for Whitechapel, Watson? No, just showing people what you look like. Um, okay. I'm going to Whitechapel by myself in the middle of the night. I think it's like two in the morning. So I can make myself a victim. All right, let me see if I miss anything. Because there were some doors I didn't go through. Wait, let me make sure I'm not walking out the front door. Because, you know, I'm, a, I'm an explorer type. I don't know which one. That could probably be the front door. Because you walk in and you hang up your stuff. All right, let's see. Was it your bedroom, Sherlock? Oh, wow. Okay. We probably live together, huh? Oh, the sheet music. It's got to be uh, this is faces. Nice. Is that a bust of himself? at it. Uh, oh, very interesting dress form. Isn't that what they're called? Just mannequin things? Okay. Oh, and it, no, no reflection. We've got lady. Alright. Okay? Is that a disguise? That's interesting. It's very 1970s, like Ron Swanson or something. Uh, Ron Swanson? Is that the name I'm thinking of? I was trying to think of, I think that's like from a show. Ron Swanson? It's a show I never watched, but I've heard that name so many times. And, uh, but I was thinking of, um, Anchorman. Okay. Interesting. Right, let me check the other room real quick. Let me just walk outside. Oh. It's gotta be my room. Nice armoire. Very nice, actually. Or this is a curtain. It's an armoire. Very nice. Handsome petticoat. I'm with the times. Okay. Oh, typewriter from my memoirs. Ooh, I am a writer. Goodness, is this me? This looks like real life. I'm not a, um, listen, I have trouble organizing, organizing things. So, you know, oh, we have the same picture. Oh, there's a picture of a heart on the wall because I'm a doctor. Um, but yeah, I'm not a really great organizer. Oh, okay. Oh, look okay, at like a, see, I know everything. Like, this is an old-fashioned shaving bowl. You wash your face in here, you shave a bit. Do a little trim, got the razor blade. Got the probably that's alcohol aftershave or whatever. Shampoo even? I'm a I'm hygienic, but you know I'm disheveled. That's cool. Okay, let's go. Oh wait. Oh, do I need a raincoat or anything? Jacket? Just going outside. Okay, he wants me to go to White Chapel. Which is in this area. Uh do I I don't want to fast travel. I'm gonna start at the end. I want to see everything from the beginning well, to if end. If I follow Holmes's instructions, September then to 7th, begin 8th. my investigation into this leather apron, I must first head to the police station. Oh, okay. I was supposed to first head here anyways. 12:30 in the morning. Oof. This is gonna be a creepy night, dude. I'm already like kind of. Ooh. Ooh, scare me. Wait, he like stopped and turned around. Ooh, he's coming over here. You okay, man? Keep walking. Keep walking. We'll, we'll talk later. Let me get inside the police station, dude. Do you guys have an extra, like, Billy Goat's Gruff? What are those things called? What I called them the other day? I said it perfectly fine the other day. Billy's, right? Billy Club. Let me get, let me get one of those or two. Okay, hey, we opened your bag for you. Did you did you tell us anything good? We only saw good one evening, report from him. sir. What do you... I know you. You were here last week with oh, just Sherlock last Holmes. Week? All right. Indeed. Mm. I have come to bring a message from Sherlock Holmes for Inspector Aberline. Very well, I will pass it on. But come to think of it, someone was asking about you recently. Finley, the caretaker of some shady boarding house nearby. Does that mean anything to you? Ah, perhaps. Yeah, I know, I know uh, Finley from the boarding house, right? Wasn't he the one who found the suitcase for that belong to you, you incompetent cop? Okay, leather apron. Actually, I read in the Star that you have arrested a suspect called Leather I didn't read apron. that article. You shouldn't believe what you read in that rag, sir. The man is being hunted, but we have yet to get our hands on him. And we aren't close to it either. Why ever not? Bah, he's a specialist in the streetwalker racket. These girls make pitiful witnesses, and we don't inspire confidence. Furthermore, the man seems to be pretty discreet lately. 
Someone must be helping to hide him. What do we? Okay. How to get on his trail? That's right. I'm looking for a leather apron. One of these girls would have to confide in us and give a valid description of the man. Then we'd ask around the journeymen who use aprons. I imagine. I feel like when we when I think of leather leather apron, I think of leather face. I think of butcher. You know. Well, goodbye. I don't know what they I mean go here to by it. Finley's boarding house. Gosh, we're really just investigating with no weapon? Now, wait a second. Because he was, like, in the star. How did I not... Did I not read this? I didn't even read this. Did I read this? I have amnesia. The star, London. Thursday, September 6th, 1888. Because it's the 7th, 8th right now. Oh, what? One half penny. The largest circulation money, blah, blah, blah. Leather apron. More about his career, his latest movements in the borough. All right, I'm going to read this. I'm pretty sure I didn't read this. Uh, the sense of fear which the murder of the unfortunate woman Nichols has thrown over the neighborhood, and especially over her companions, shows no sign of decreasing. A number of, of the street wanderers are in nightly terror of leather apron. One of our reporters visited one of the single woman's lodging houses last night. It is in Thrall Street, one of the darkest and most terrible-looking spots in Whitechapel. I definitely did not read this. The house keeps open till 1 o'clock in the morning and reopens again at 5. In the house nightly are 66 women who get their bed for four DOS. The proprietor of the place, who is also owner of several other houses of a similar character in the neighborhood, told some gruesome stories of the man who has now become to be regarded as the terror of the East End. Night after night, he said, night after night, huh? I just want to make sure I'm reading this article correctly. Night after night, he said, what? Night after night, he said, had women come in in a fainting condition after being knocked about by leather apron he himself would never be out in the neighborhood after 12 o'clock at night except with a loaded revolver this is not our guy the terror he he said would go to a public house or coffee room and peep in through the window to see if a particular woman was there he would then vanish lying in wait for his victim at some convenient corner hidden from the view of everybody the police are making efforts to arrest him but he constantly changes his quarters some of the unfortunate women state that he is now in one of the low slums in the borough. This man has a revolver. I'm going to find him as Watson with no weapon or backup. Okay. One of them said he, she saw him crossing London Bridge as stealthily as usual with head bent, his skimpy coat turned up about his ears, and looking as if he were in a desperate hurry. The hunt for Leather Apron began in earnest last evening. Constables 43 and 173, J Division, um, into whose hands Leather Apron fell on Sunday afternoon were detailed to accompany Detective Einwright of the J Division mm, in a search through all the quarters where the crazy... Excuse me? Excuse me? That sounds derogatory. I don't like that. They began at half past ten in Church Street. Wait. Why do they say that? And why do they assume he's Jewish? Okay. I know it's 1888, but still. People say that. They're like, oh, well, back then. I feel like it's still wrong. It's always wrong. All right. And people knew it was wrong back then. They began at half past ten in Church Street in Shoreditch, rumor having located the suspected man there. They went through lodging houses, into pubs, down side streets, threw their bullseye into every shadow, and searched the quarter thoroughly, but without result. Ah. That's still bothering me. So I don't understand. The hunt collect co the hunt continued. Later down in the Brick Lane neighborhood, Florendine Florendine Lane being Leather Apron's preferred lodging place lately, he was not found here, however, and the search, which then took the direction of the London hospital, resulted in nothing. It is a general disbelief oh my god, it's the general belief that the man has left the district. The clue furnished by the woman who denounced the man on Sunday is a very unfortunate one. Her offer to prove by two women that Leather Apron was seen walking with the, the murdered woman in Baker's Row at two o'clock last Friday morning is the most direct bit of evidence that yet has appeared. I can barely comprehend what I'm reading right now. His conduct on Sunday was as usual. He never answers a question when it is put to him and only speaks under strong compulsion. Mike, the grocer in George's yard, dwelt a long time last evening on this peculiarity. He knows Leather Apron very well, and he has known him for six years, he says. Do we know his real name? The man is uncontrollably mad, and that anybody who met him face to face would know it, that his eyes are never still, but are always shifting uneasily, 
and he never looks anybody in the eye. Leather Apron used to live in the lodging house around the corner from the grocer and was turned out of there some months ago with, with an order not to return. The lodging house is a few doors de below the model doorway in which the Turner woman was found with 39 stabs. The, is that the first murder that we, we investigated? Okay, I didn't even know we had this in there. I read my notes. So, that was a lot of information in that article. I'm not feeling super confident about it. Wait, did I ever look at these guys? These wanted guys? I can barely get past there because this... Excuse me. Dangerous criminal is searched. These two guys? Alright, anyways. Apparently, okay, so he like wears a coat above his ears or whatever. And he doesn't look you in the eyes. And he lives in a lodging house that's near where a lady was murdered. Something like that. That's all I got from that article. Alright. So he's not caught. Everybody knows him as Leather Apron, but nobody knows who he is. Excuse me. Tell me, is it? We don't much like people. We all looks around here. Understood. You look like me. He don't look like me. Excuse me? Ew. I am out here with no weapon. I think this guy wants my attention. Got a shilling, Gov. Yeah. All right. So let's check the map real quick. Not the map. Just take me directly to the map, please. Alright, I wish I would show you where you are on the map. Okay, so I think I need to go see Finley. Because I think Finley, like, kind of knows where he's at. Okay, Finley lives like... You okay, ma'am? Ooh, it's so cold. Come, come. Let's warm up. That's okay. Uh, what are you doing? Always got to be active. See, for example, in the Marines, they salute anything that moves and comb the rest. Do the same. All right. Okay. Well, be on the lookout then. A lot of people sleeping outside today. What you cooking? Hot potato, sir. No worms, and that's my guarantee. That's cool. He's got his own little business. All right. This is where what's his face lives. Hey, constable. Tell me, is it? You should return home, sir. You, well, he's not wrong. Okay, Finny, Finley. This man out here, I thought he was ironing. He's painting a door. This guy's sweeping, he's painting. He's always trying to do a good job, you know? Let's get to know him a little better. He's taking care of his boarding house. Good evening, Finley. Oh, good evening, sir. Aren't you the gentleman who was with the great detective the other time? That is indeed me, Dr. Watson. All right. I was talking to the police. Tell me, Finley. I was told that you were looking for us at the police station. Indeed. I wanted to thank you for last time, you know. That vagrant has never set foot round mine again. I even found a tenant, one who pays well, his rent on May he rest me. in peace. All right. Oh, who's the tenant? Is it the guy we're looking you for? You don't seem very happy. But you were lucky to have found a good tenant so quickly. It's just that this man is... Very strange. He paid several days in advance and I gave him a key to the place. Since then, he goes out every night and returns at ungodly hours. I'm sure he goes to visit the ladies, but still, every night. And when he moved in, something must have broken in his case and stank up the stairs in his room for two days. I think it was a jar. It must be over there. You just left it there? Tell me, have you heard talk of Leather Apron? By the papers, that's all. This man seems very sinister. Do you know any journeymen who use this type of apron? The slaughterhouse butchers, I believe, but about definitely butchers. the cobblers. I know one, old Isaac Solomonovich. His workshop is on a small street in the Jewish community, across from the hospital. He's a good man. He can help you. But you know, the people there are very close and don't share much with non-Jews. Maybe if you didn't other them to death. Thank you, Finley. At your service, sir. That's interesting. So I wonder who wrote that article. Because the way they wrote it seemed kind of biased. You know? I mean, how many how many butchers are in town? Now, we were over here and there's a bunch of flies. But he said that there's a broken bottle that was stinking up the place. And I'm a detective. I'm a baby detective. Detective Junior. Oh, it's right here. Okay. 
Wouldn't think we'd find it immediately. Hmm. This odor is very strong indeed. But the whole neighborhood as such has a dreadful stench. Finley might have an idea as to what this jar had contained. I mean, he's... What oh. do you want, Doctor? Oh, okay. Uh, I found your broken jar. He said that he, it stank, but he didn't know what it was. You're right. The pieces of the jar that your tenant broke do give off a strange smell. It's true. That's quite normal, given his trade. But yes. a bottle? And what would the trade be of your strange tenant? A doctor, like yourself, I believe. Oh. Dr. Tumblety, a foreigner. Canadian, perhaps. Dr. Tumblety. It might be interesting to know more about him. Yeah, is he in? Tell me, have you heard talk oh, of... Oh, I didn't... By I didn't do you mean know... to. He's a... Thank you, Finley. At your service, sir. Okay. Now, I was going up here and then it shot me back down. Where's Dr. Tumblety? Do I am I still carrying that? I am still carrying this funky glass with me. Alright, that's fine. Well... How do I unclick this? Okay, anyways. Alright. So I'm, I'm gonna... Well, where am I going? I don't know where the Jewish community is. said to uh, go investigate I mean I do know where the okay I do know where the butcher shop is at though well creepy I'm not going down there got me walking these alleyways this is a scary place hey are you sleep are you sleeping sweet having pleasant dreams I have nothing to ask yeah I don't want to wake him up oh I forgot I can run okay the temptation to talk to everybody just so, so they can say something mean to me all right, gosh, I gotta go through this place. Flowers. You selling flowers at flowers. one in the morning? This guy looks so. Hello. Tell me, is it? What? I know you. Flowers. I think you do, sir. All right. Sleeping, little kids. One of you. I have nothing to ask. All right, let me stop talking to these people. Um, one of them is like Sherlock's little like spy, though. Okay, I'm going to. Ooh, I gotta be careful and turn these corners. I. Okay, where am I going? White Chapel. I'm going over here. Oh, the butcher shop. I think it's just over here. Bef after the doctor's place. Oh, but he's a doctor, so will he be here with the other doctors? <laughs> Dr. Tumblety? Hey, you know Dr. Tumblety? I think he's just waiting for me. Good evening, Doctor. My name is Dr. Watson. Pleased to meet you. Good evening. I am Dr. Gibbons. Dr. Likewise. Gibbons. Uh, Dr. Gibbons, do you know... Oh, who is that? Do you know Dr. Tumblety? Why can't I even what ask can him? What can I do for you, my dear colleague? Uh, apparently nothing. Oh, oh, I can show him this stinky glass. Maybe he knows about the smell. He's a doctor. What can I do for you, my dear colleague? Can you smell this? Please smell this. What can I do for you? Okay, we can't get him to smell that. That's unfortunate. I mean, that was a genius level idea I just had there, okay? Don't... Don't help me. If it's... Okay, I'm gonna just press all the wrong buttons. Uh, hey, are you okay? Look pretty happy. We can't even talk to him. He's breathing though, so he's alive. All right, uh, probably okay. Let's. Oh, okay. Oh, the poor lady. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, I thought he could help me identify what was in the glass jar. That that would make so much sense to me. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just go to the. Where am I? Oh, yeah. I go to the butcher's store that I saw earlier. Well, it's not even open. Am I 
I'm in. I have nothing to ask. He's got like the same green bottle. What's in what's the what's the plan? Across from the hospital. Okay, so I found the slaughterhouse. I found one of them, right? But old Isaac Solomon Sol Sol Solomon Solomon Solomonovich his uh okay he his workshops on a small street across from the hospital okay so you just gotta go back and okay so here's the hospital his workshops on a small street across from the hospital this is the hospital oh it's gotta be like this street okay so let me all right that's the church it's gotta be here this is semi across the hospital Oh, boot? Oh, Solomonovich! Boot and shoe repair. I thought he, this guy said he was a slaughterhouse butcher. You know him? Hot tato sir. No worms, and that's my guarantee. All right. That's a very popular business item. Oh, a here cobbler we are. shop. Okay, I thought he... Okay. Hmm. Closed. Yeah, at one in the morning. will return later. The policeman said the street girls would know something about the leather apron. Maybe I should go and see Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Okay. Okay. We'll go see Lucy. Watson, I feel like Watson doesn't run as fast as Sherlock, but maybe it's just me. I I know where Lucy lives. Oh wow, that horse and carriage went by pretty fast. Okay. Lucy. I remember Lucy. Alright, where are you at? Oh my god. We're just gonna wake her up. I mean, I guess she's a night girl. Lucy, are you in? Gentleman caller oh, here. Oh, it's you. I'm coming. Doctor Watson, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, oh, how's your uncle doing? Well, and yourself? And how's your uncle? Well, he sleeps a lot, but he doesn't seem to be suffering. Good. Your medicine has worked wonders. Thank you again. It was the least I could do. All right, do you know about a leather apron? I have come to see you about a certain leather apron. Have you heard of him? Oh, yes, of course. Terrible things are said about that man. Have you ever come across him? Goodness gracious, no. But I know that he has threatened and taken many girls in uh, my situation. I don't know what more I can say, but um, Bella would be able to tell you some. Who's Bella? Who is Bella? Bella Pullman. She's the landlady of the place where I, uh, I could take you there if you like. Please do. Uh, appreciate it. It's me. It's Lucy. This gentleman would like to speak to Bella. It's the doctor who helped me. I must leave to return to my uncle. Thanks again. All right. You got a new place on the map then? Knock, knock. It's me. Oh, we got a bouncer, bodyguard. Out of the way, I don't like the look of you. I really appreciate how kind everybody is to me over here. Interesting. I, I kind of like this whole, like, courtyard gate situation. What we have. This is a brothel. But, yeah. yeah. Can I get a refill, please? Let's think of the show Harlots. Great show. If you'd be patient, Madam Bella will arrive in a moment. <laughs> she got a nice up and on, too. Good evening. I am Dr. Watson. It is young Lucy who told me to come see you. Oh, she is really oh, a madam. So you're the good Samaritan who saved her uncle without asking for anything in return. And now you've come to see me, no doubt, to explain that the poor little thing doesn't belong here and you will see to her future. Well, if no. you expect me to let her leave with you. <laughs> it's not that, ma'am. Uh, you should know I am a married man. Did that don't matter? That matter? Unfortunately. Okay. I believe there has been a misunderstanding. The reason that Lucy sent me here is that you may be able to give me some information about Leather Apron. Are you a doctor or a constable? I am most certainly a doctor, but I am acting in this matter in a private capacity, and I would like to find this man. 
Well, if you're able to rid us of him, I'll give you a week's worth of free passes. That man is a thorn in our sides. He spies on the girls in the streets and watches them inside the houses, spying through the windows. And as soon as they're finished with a client, he jumps on them without any warning and forces them to give him their money. Terrible. I've never seen him. But one of my girls was attacked by this man, and she said that he wore a leather apron and carried a knife. And his face. Oh, he has a horrible head with rat's eyes and a deformed mouth. She even said that she knew his name, um, Pizer or Pizer, I think. But I don't know where she can be found. Margie Nutcracker, the girl I'm talking about, could tell you more, but I had to let her go last week. Why? Where's Margie? Why did you let Margie go? The poor girl caught a shameful sickness, and the symptoms oh. have attacked her face, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So I gave her notice, and a little bit to help her along. I don't know where she is now, but she'll certainly be getting treatment at the clinic if she's still in the neighborhood. Did you speak to the police? <sighs> what would they do? Who cares about the girls in the streets? Dang, they don't have, like back then, I don't think they really had any cures for that. I'm not even sure. I'll have to fact check that. Okay, tumble. Would you have received a visit from another doctor, a stranger? by the name of Tumblety. I'm just like you, Doctor. Sworn to secrecy in my profession. But as I've taken a fancy to you, I can tell you that this name is not unknown to me. And if you do me a little favor, it is possible I might remember something about him. Everybody wants something. <clears throat> uh, what kind of favor must I do for you? You see that man over there? He's a rich artist, a painter, a regular client round We're quite young. Well, yesterday, he came and left his cane in the umbrella stand in the hall before going into one of the rooms. Well, when he returned to this room, the cane had disappeared. It's a cane with a massive silver knob. Must be worth a fortune. He threatened to call the police unless he got free services in my establishment for a year. I'd be forced to accept, unwillingly, of course, given the services that he's demanding, unless the cane is found. Man, I bet he misplaced it. That is a terrible deal. Free services for a year? Did you question the residents regarding the theft? They didn't see anything, and there's not one of them that would risk stealing from a client here. Who was in the room when your weasel of a client was in the chambers? There were a few that came and went, but Mary could tell you better than I can, because she was the one at the counter yesterday. God, I love her outfit. Thank you, ma'am. No problem, my angel. Well, this is the lodger. Probably a list of pseudonyms. It's giving a rose from Titanic a little bit. A little bit. These paintings are suggestive. At the very least. Uh, yeah, at least for the time period. I've seen, like, uh, like not famous paintings, but I've seen, like, photos from back then that are supposed to be considered private. And they're, like, so, like, oh, shoulder. Like, I like it. I like it. I like that that, that was considered, like, oh, you know. Okay, what's this one? These paintings are... Oh, okay. Same thing. Kissy noises? Best not to stray off in that direction. <laughs> A hey, Watson? Uh, oh yeah, I'm talking to her, but I'm investigating. Hey, good man, chap. Let's do some ID. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my dear man. Good I was led to believe that you're a doctor. None of the residents of this establishment are among my patients, sir. Oh, you're not here as a doctor, but as a man, then. I understand. This is my kind of place, too. It's in these houses in Whitechapel that you find the girls that are the most natural and definitely the most docile. Your way of speaking about these women is not that of a gentleman, sir. Um, I wasn't really understanding what he was saying. I heard that you were the victim of a robbery here. Oh, I'm not complaining. The loss of that walking stick will certainly bring me a very pleasant compensation. I'm not happy about this blackmail situation. What does your cane look like? The stick is ebony, about 35 inches long, 
The round knob is made from chiseled silver with a ring around the middle of the same workmanship. Just like the tip, for that matter. If you find it, don't tell a soul. Keep it for yourself. Got it? <laughs> well, goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Or until next time. And good evening. <laughs> Okay, is this probably going to be like another suggestive photo? These paintings are... I don't feel like that one is suggestive. Alright, anyways. <laughs> the photos are cute, alright. Um, her name Mary, right? Look, at, let's, I gotta check the outfit. It's the gildedness. It's the gilded, like, banding ribbons. And the shades? I am a fan. Uh, you spill a drink? <laughs> what happened to this rug? Oh, it's when we got a coal yesterday. Oh. I asked the young man to fill the pile. Came back to put it down, but his feet were covered in soot and he made a black print. Madame Bella said it was my fault and I got a shilling's penalty. I also have to clean the print and it's no picnic. He has immense feet, that boy. Yeah, how do you clean up coal? <laughs> Who delivers the coal? It's never the same person. I've hmm. never seen that lad before. Interesting. I heard that there was a theft yesterday. Did you see anything? No, and I was here the whole time. There you go. She told me to ask her because she was she was the one that was doing the check-ins. I heard that there was a theft yesterday. Did I? No. Uh, did I say the coat stand? Do you always keep an eye on the coat stand? Oh, yes. Well, when the coal delivery came, a client came out of the chambers and stopped me from seeing the boy who brought the bucket of coal. You don't think he would have taken advantage? Well, you never know. Until next time, miss. With pleasure, sir. Can I get a refill, please? Can I get a refill, please? All right, uh, is that all the investigations I can do here? Yes, Dr. Watson? Oh, look, look here. That's it. Thank you, Ma. No problem, my angel. Wait, so I need to look for a person who works in the coal industry? How do I get out of here? Best not to stray off in all that right, well, direction. Where's the front door? They all, all the curtains look the same. Watson's got quite the job ahead of him. That's right, she wants me to find the cane, but Apparently, maybe the coal guy took the cane. <gasps> Dude, I love this. Oh my gosh, it's literally Walter Sickert. That's the, the, it's literally Walter Sickert. That's hilarious. I was just talking about him. How he, to me, is Jack the Ripper. Of course, you know, we don't know. I don't, he's not portrayed like this in the books I read. But that is so funny that, that, he, that they know enough about the lore of the surrounding Jack the Ripper that, that like this is like an Easter egg maybe I love that winning 10, 10 out of 10 anyways okay all right he lost his fancy cane that's not really important I don't even need to know what it looks like um okay so this young man came to, to be able to, like put it down his feet his feet were covered in soot all right okay um when the cold delivery claimed my client came out of the chambers and stopped me from seeing the boy who brought the bucket of coal all right, so was it a boy? Like a young man? Oh, creepy. Okay, um, okay. Investigation continues. Where, where would this town keep coal? You know, where would you guys keep coal at? Tell me, is it? Nasty weather, right? Eh? Always got to be active. See, for example, in the Marines, they say- All right, uh, where would coal be? Watson, give me a hint. Where should I go? Black footprints. Sickert, the Whitechapel artist. Wow. Information from Madame Bella. I love these little actual notes. All right. So leather apron's been threatening and robbing the girls at the brothel, and they don't know who it is. But she said that she would help me. She knows who Doctor Thumbly or Timbley is, but she won't help me until I get this cane. Because this kid over here, Walter Sickert, is using... You know, okay, I'll tell you something I read about. Walter Sickert would not be at a brothel, I'll tell you this. In the book, it's suspected 
and documented that he had an operation when he was younger because he was born with like some kind of forgot what it is maybe like this disfiguration or some kind of thing on his privates and his parents opted like I think to remove it something like that and there's it's documented that his mom or whoever would like dress him up as a girl and stuff like that anyways I don't think he would be at the brothel is what I'm trying to say read the book the book is very detailed and it's amazing I told you it's um Patricia Cornwall portrait of a killer okay it's good all right anyways and they have pictures of his um I'll show you some there's pictures of his painting the kind of art he did let me see if I can find some hold on can I find some here's one this is a famous one I don't know if I'll be able to my um camera sometimes mirrors things let's see yeah this is one of his paintings okay anyways um okay I'm trying to think of where to go next we still have this broken glass should I go back to Sherlock I don't even know where he lives he's nowhere near where we're at where can I find coal that's the last thing like I need black footprints sh sh we don't know who delivers the coal never the same person I've never seen that lad before all right all right I need to maybe I can try to find coal commercial street where would coal be where would coal be dude I don't even know what street I where even am I all right, the police station nearby. Okay, I haven't seen any kind of place where coal could be yet, and it's so late. Should I just ask the young people on the street? Should I try to find that kid that's friends with Sherlock Holmes? I do not like being out here by myself. All right, I'm. Oh, wasp nest. Oh, I can ask people at the bar. The wasp's nest. This pub looks even more disreputable than the Golden Lion in Baker Street. Okay, that must be a place we'll go later. All right, well, we are just. Oh wait, W. Hindley Sack Manufacturer, Van and Cart Builder, A. Outfield or Doubtfield. What's this? International Working Man's Club. Look, the Club for Socialist Jews, the Cradle of Liberty. Another political club of little interest. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean, all the kids are asleep. As they should be. Earth, okay. J.H. Fisher, oh, umbrellas. No, well. <laughs> Not quite canes, okay. All right, let's keep looking around. Maybe there's a coal shop. I guess I can also look for footprints. I'm not sure if this game like really wants you to do all that. Now, let's retrace my steps. Hmm, the night is cool. What a horrible summer we have had. Okay. Um. Have I found more information? Tumblety could he's a potential he's a suspect, absolutely. He could be Leatherface. And he also yeah, he could be Leatherface. Leather apron, but I don't think he is because he's a doctor and the brothel lady knew him. And if he was leather apron, she would have said something because she don't like him because he robs her ladies. Does the name Tumblety mean anything Good to thing you? I came back Not here. at all. But if you like I can make inquiries. Fine. Why not? One never knows. Could be a fake name. Okay, so we gave... We well, goodbye. That's it? We gave him something to think about. Wonderful. You just remember the name Tumblety and give back to me. Uh, ask around. Do all this and that. Alright, helping the police. Alright, this is the... Oh, this is the church. Very creepy. Okay. We can't go through here? It's interesting that we can't go through there. Can we go to the church at all? Though I don't know how that would help us. Okay, this guy's doing like construction or whatever. He's, you got coal? Get a try, mister. On the best window washer in the area. You know anybody who produces coal? Look at this lady. You alright? Oh my gosh, are you a victim? 
I have nothing to ask. Jeez, this is an unnatural way to lay down. Okay, what's this? A baby carriage. Look at this creepy door back here. I mean, we're just exploring everything at this point. The way these people will be out on the street outside, that has got to be one of the most dangerous times to be alive. Okay. I have no reason to go that way. No, not yet. Why are you out here guarding the hospital? Tell me, is it? Now, time to chat. I've got business. Got it. Gotcha. You look like you've met somebody from something yes. nefarious. Okay, I'm going to go back to the doctor and see if I'm going to just toss the name Tumble Tea around. I thought I could be like, hey, can you smell this vial? Tell me what medicine it is. What Wait, can I do for you, my dear colleague? Hopefully something. Okay. Oh my gosh. Finally something. Wait, who's Margie? I don't remember. I have come to see you about oh, yeah. one of your patients. Margie. Margie. That's right. She goes by the nickname Nutcracker. A disease on her face. She gets her prescription from the clinic. She's a lady of the her. night and is afflicted with a venereal disease. That's I know cool. who you're talking about. Indeed, Margie has syphilis and is Told being you. treated with mercury. Do you have her address? All right, they have a no. treatment. And for your information, she left London for good three days ago. She felt threatened. Ah. Uh. Oh, excuse me. Margie felt threatened. But by whom? I believe that Margie was particularly scared of a terrifying man who attacked her once. Did she say the name Paisa or Pytha? Unfortunately, she didn't give a name, but she described a man with shifty, rat-like eyes and a mouth twisted in a sinister grimace. Did Margie have any idea where this man who terrified her so much might be found? No, but she told me that another girl who'd been attacked like her had told her that this man worked in a cobbler's run by an old Israeli. Also, she saw him again last week, the night of the big fire. She told of going to see the fire like most everyone else in the area. While there, she recognised her attacker in the crowds gathered at the warehouses. There was no mistake in a face like that, she said. She kept an eye on the man the whole time the firemen were working in order to avoid him. Goodbye, Dr Gibbons. Until we meet again, my dear colleague. I have this thing where sometimes I completely just listen to every other fourth word or something. So, but that's fine. Oh, we can sack with our items like that? Okay. Uh, that's fine, because I got the dialogue. So... There's something that's bothering me about this game that I may talk about, but I don't want to make something out of nothing or draw attention to it. So if it keeps coming up though, then I am going to address it. And my brain just thinks in a very, I'm very passionate about social issues and I know a lot about harmful stereotypes and I feel like there are some in this game. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, uh, I, I'm aware of it, like, because I study this kind of stuff, so, like, it comes up for me, but I'm also trying not to, like, magnify something that's not there, because then I feel like, oh, I'm thinking in stereotypes. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's hard not to see them, because of the stuff I've researched, so, you know, like, all right, um, let's see. Okay, so, Mary came here to get her cleared up, and... Wait, where's the conversation with the doctor? That's interesting. That's interesting how it's... So it's just like a continued dialogue with him then. Okay. Um, I thought, I thought it goes in like chronological order or whatever. All right. So, okay. So there was another girl. This is why I stopped listening. There's another girl who had been attacked like her. Hey, he had worked... Oh, and a cobbler's. Okay. Okay. So, wow. We had told her that this man... Okay. So we already know that there's a guy named Isaac who uh solomon it's i'm gonna kill his last name apologize he works at the cobbler we found his shop it's not open right now okay so all right so we're getting all this stuff that's pointing to isaac okay he not he's not available for a conversation right now he's not available for a dialogue it's too early this interview with the doctor revealed an important fact leather apron could not be the bucks row murderer according to margie the villain passed most of the night of the crime at the fire. He could not have been at the scene of the murder at the moment it was committed. He is nonetheless a dangerous character. I thought we were investigating him separately. I never thought he was Jack the Ripper. Absolutely not. I mean, he's not even called Jack the Ripper in this game yet. But 
Okay, so what do you want to do now? What do you want to do, uh, my man? Because the cobbler's closed. You want to try to go there again? We can. Alright, what is next then, Watson? Oh, okay. No, wait. Alright. It's cool that the um, objectives are not extremely clear, because then it feels like more realistic, but also like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Where am I gonna go? Who have I not talked to? I still need to find the cane. I still need to find wherever coal is. That's what I was looking for as well. Like, where's coal at? Where do you get your coal at in this town? Because there's a little kid. Oh, look at that creepy alleyway. I do not want to go down. Okay, hold on. This poor... I cannot stand seeing these people like this. It is too much. It's too real. Oh, I, I have like... no Ooh. reason to go Oops. that way. It's, game. it's not even supposed to be scary. Ridiculous. Jump at that. Embarrassing me. Okay. Who wants to be walking down an alleyway? It's just my eyesight could never. I could never feel safe walking down an, an alley like this. I started seeing things in the dark. There's something I, I would have never seen. Okay. Look at this. How? How? Wow, this game is really like this. Okay, I have to play extra. Okay. I have to pay. Uh, oh my god. Okay. I have to pay super, super attention. Look at this. Do you see those footprints right there? How would I have noticed those? And how would I have known that he came to the clinic? The guy with the soot? The, I was like I, thinking about looking for black footprints, but wow. Oh my gosh. I would have never seen these in my life. These footprints are the same as those found on the rug at the brothel. That's something. Okay. Wonderful. Um, is that's the takeaway? These footprints are the same. Okay. All right, let's see what I can do with that. Uh, do you know who left those footprints, Doctor? What can it's I your, do for you, my dear your clinic. Colleague? You see those right there? Pardon me, Doctor, but who made the large black footprints there near the beds? The brother of one of my patients. The poor thing had a leg amputated after colliding with a carriage. We arranged to find her a prosthesis. Prostheses oh? are very expensive. How did this man pay? He told me that one of his uncles gave him a walking stick with a chiseled silver knob. Uh... I agreed to accept this knob in exchange for a simple prosthesis with harness. But this object is of great value and I could finance half a dozen other prostheses by selling it on Petticoat Lane. I need you to give it back to me, please, actually. That cane is stolen. It's evidence in a crime. Doctor, I have reason to believe that the silver knob that you possess is from a cane that was stolen by the man who brought it to you. And I believe I know to whom it belongs. That's what I was worried about. The story of the uncle seemed a little strange. Nevertheless, you must have proof of what you claim. I will show you all of the knobs that we have here. Oh. If you find the knob that the young man gave me, I will believe you. If, okay, whoa. Whoa, what? So be it, but something is bothering me. I will need a complete cane, not just a knob. Don't worry, dear chap. Build one. I can loan you some tools. Oh, it's Make use really of the odds and ends in my cupboard. It'll help get rid of it. Hmm. Well, I shall try. I will have to remember the description that Sickert gave. Okay, wait. Goodbye, can I Dr. Gibbons. Let me see Until these knobs. Until we meet again, my dear colleague. Do I have to bring the stick first? Where's the objects you said that I could have? They're in your cupboard? Where? Where's your cupboard at? Ah. Oh, aha. The space key. It never fails. I don't want to save it. That was a pretty big jump there. Wasted a lot of time walking all over Whitechapel. We gotta build a cane. Oh. Okay, he said the knob had like a silver ring. This looks kind of like a silver ring. Should I put it here? Okay. Um, he said it was 35 inches long. Okay. 35 inches. So let's measure these canes, huh? Uh, from... S Not a very long cane then. Hold on now. Wait a second. Do I know how to use a ruler? Didn't he say it was 35 inches? N these all are way taller than that. Am I tripping? 
I'm pretty sure he said 35 inches. Can I look at my notes? My guy. What's his name? Sickert. Oh, it's ebony. About 35 inches long. The round knob is made from chiseled silver with a ring around the middle. Uh, a ring around the middle. Of the same workmanship. Just like the tip for that matter. Okay. It's ebony. So it's black. But what the heck? 35 inches? Where? About 35 inches. I mean, ebony could be actually a lot of shades because this could also be ebony. It's a type of wood. All of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm going to know wood sizes. And he said chiseled silver. This looks chiseled. And he said the tip is the same. I think this, the ring is the same, right? And so is the tip. 35 inches? You gotta be kidding me. There, all done. Holmes couldn't have done better himself. Pretty what good, can I do good. for you, my dear colleague? I measured that. That was not no 35 inches. I don't know what kind of measurements those were. The knob. I believe I found the knob from the stolen cane, which I succeeded in putting back together. That's the one. And yet I cannot give it to you, Doctor. I will only return it to the police, and only if there is an official complaint against me. That guy's me. not going to make Would a complaint. Would there be a way to convince you to give me the cane? Find me a dozen solid, adjustable harnesses for wooden leg prostheses, and it's yours, Doctor. These people are... What? This guy thinks this is a game? I can make you as an accomplice to thievery. Goodbye, Dr. Gibbons. And blackmail. Until we meet again, my dear colleague. Lucky I'm not an assistant district attorney or whatever, sister. What am I saying? Assistant district attorney! Where am I going to find a dozen black harnesses? Also, can I close this? Because this is going to bother me. A dozen... Okay, so that's cool. i got to remember to use the space key because it shows me stuff I can in, like interact with. Um, a dozen black harnesses? Who does this guy think I am? What? A dozen... Harnesses for leg prosthetics? Where am I gonna find that? Find me a dozen solid, adjustable harnesses for wooden leg prosthesis, and it's yours. A dozen. Where have we seen anything like that? I feel like the cobbler can make something like that. Oh. There's nobody here. How very odd. I must be out all day and night. What time is it? Does it show us the time? It's open. Okay. Let's investigate since he's not in. Let's give it a quick once over. This man makes shoes. He probably can make harnesses. Well, I love the attention to detail. Oh, this looks like a harness. I say, these things look like harnesses. Oh my, they are noisy. I'm just going to steal them? Watson? Good evening, sir. Pardon the interruption. The door was open. I didn't think that I would find anyone working at this hour. Good evening, sir. I didn't hear you come in. Sure, sir, you are a suspect. I think. Say, those things that made noise, they are really harnesses, aren't they? Yes, horse harnesses. But I must tell you, sir, that the store is normally closed at this hour. That is why I've asked you to return tomorrow. You haven't really asked me yet. I didn't come about my shoes. I came to speak of a cobbler, perhaps one of your former employees, a man with very particular habits. You aren't with the police by any chance. I'm sorry, but I do not want to speak of anything but shoes with you. Finley sends his regards? That's right. They were kind of like buddies. He kind of likes this guy? I am not a policeman. I am Dr. Watson. It's Mr. Finley who told me that you might be in a position to inform me. Ah, that Mr. Finley is a very brave man. And if he sent you, then you must certainly be a worthy man also. So, Doctor, who is this cobbler with strange habits? We don't know if it's Pizer or Pyther. The man of whom I speak is called Pizer or Pyther, a man with a frightening face. Do you know him? Yes, John Pizer. He worked here for a while, but he is no longer here. 
Where is he? Do you know where I can find him? No. And if you look, you will not find him. Why? Because he is in hiding, Doctor. You see, a week ago, a horrible murder took place in the neighborhood. A rumor circulated that he might have been responsible for this crime. They say he has quarreled with women of certain virtue in the past, if you understand me. Yes, they're saying that he robbed them? Isaac, it is about the Bucks Road case that I have come to see you. I have the certitude and an incontestable witness that Paisa is innocent, at least of this crime, although he has attacked a number of street women. If he doesn't come forward to explain himself to the authorities, he is condemned to hiding and to take the fall for this murder. Furthermore, it will cast suspicions on your community because they must be hiding him. And while the whole police force is hunting for him, they cannot concentrate on the real assassin who roams the streets and, one never knows, may take any one of you any day. He's not what you say then. is true. Your visit is a godsend to our community, Doctor. I tell you something. I know Sergeant Thick, an honest policeman who lives in the area. I'll tell John's family that he must go there to explain himself. But if you could please go as soon as possible to the police to give them this report that you say is incontestable. I will go as soon as I take leave of you. Thank have you. your harnesses? If I can ever be of service in any way, do not hesitate to ask. Well, if you insist... Could we transform your horse harnesses into harnesses for wooden legs? Adjustable harnesses. A good craftsman can do anything, Doctor. And I do believe that's what I am. Come back in a while and it will be done. That will be my thanks for what you have done. I shall return later. At your convenience, sir. Ah, I am spent. I would like to return home. But I promised to go to the police as soon as I could. Now then, let's go to the police station. Okay. We have made quite a bit of progress. Nice talking to you, uh, dead man. What's this door lead to? Can't go there? Okay. Sun is rising. Okay, to the police station. Good, his place is on the map now. All right, we're gonna give his statement, I think. Meanwhile, I told you. Of course somebody's gonna get murdered. Will you? Oh, yes. will you? That's what he would say. Hey, Doctor, you seem tired. Were you wandering the darker parts of Whitechapel all night? You could say that. I have some information on Leather Apron, the man of whom we spoke earlier. Do you know where he is? No, but I can clear him of the Bucks Row crime. A witness proved him totally innocent. Oh, oh sure Watson, not. Watson, is it only now, after many hours of walking, that you decide <laughs> to pass on the important message that Inspector Abilene is waiting for? But, um, no. But what are you doing here, Holmes? You shadowing me, man? I was worried, Watson, and with good reason it would appear. Go give the message to this policeman and let's go home. Nobody appreciates me hanging around here, you know, and it's freezing cold. Ah, Creddle, none too soon. You will take the testimony of this. No, you continue with your duty shift. I must find Chowder in Ambry Street. He's struck again. Who? The murderer, the Bucks Row assassin. Hanbury Street. Let's go, Watson. We have no time to lose. 